so I've got another video for you. On this one, I'm going to take a other swarm hive that I've got, and I'm going to split it up into uh, its main hive. I'm just going to basically break it in half, and I'm going to make two other nukes out of it. I've got two other queens that I've had come in, and I need to get them hived and kind of get them off and going. They'll actually end up being part of my uh, probably some of my overwintering nukes. So I do overwinter nukes at some point. I'd like to show you that. Uh, the reason I do that is it replaces any of my dead outs that I have. And uh, by doing that, I'm not buying packages. So I hope you'll follow along when we get to that part. But just real quick, those of you wondering, I'm using a Canon T1i camera. It doesn't have a jack for an external mic. And the sound on this one may be a little bit rough. The wind was blowing. Um, Hopefully you can hear what I'm talking about. I'm working on doing an upgrade on the camera equipment. I want to keep doing these videos and I know sound's important for that, so I hope you'll bear with me while I go through that part. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. So I've got a couple of queens that I want to add to my operation. And part of doing what I do with rearing queens and, and building drone mother hives and, and breeding hives I've got to be kind of careful about the genetics I select. I don't want to dilute everything down into just one uh, particular uh, bee line. I want to try and introduce as many different genetics as I can, and one of the best ways I can do that is to take some of the lines I'm working with and buy them from other people who are also working with them. So uh, one of the lines I'm working with is uh, Varroa sensitive hygiene, and Although I, I've incorporated uh, bee semen into my own stock in the USDA Bee Lab, I have uh, purchased other Varroa sensitive hygiene stock from some other breeders. In order to keep those lines going, I've got to bring in uh, genetics from other parts of the country, not just one area. I don't want to bring everything in, say, from California or everything in from Florida. It's not going to do me any good if, if all the bees are too closely related. Uh, if a disease all of a sudden turns up, it can still wipe everything out. So by keeping some diversity in there, I maintain a stronger stock. And so what I've got, I've got two queens that have showed up. So I'm going to go through, this is a swarm that I've picked up. Uh, it's been doing rather well. It's been building quite a bit. It's, it's fairly heavy. Um, it's got quite a few bees. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some frames from these guys. Um, and put them in these two five frame nuke boxes where I can introduce uh, some new queens to them. So the idea is, is to get young bees and brood and food to fill these nukes. And in the afternoon like it is now is probably the best time to do that. Reason being is a lot of the older forage bees are already going out, they're foraging, they're doing what they need to do. If I was to do this early morning before most of them left or late evening when they're all home, I run the risk when I set this nuke up somewhere else in this yard that these foragers are going to return back to this hive, but they're going to take this location and end up robbing these nukes out. And I don't want that to happen. So let's dig in here and see what we can find to stock these nuke boxes up. This is what we're looking for right here. We've got cat brood. This brood's probably looking at this other side. It's probably only been capped over for a day or two. We're just starting to cap over on this side, and it looks just as full as this side does. So the reason I want this is this has some young bees on it, not too many, but these other bees that are in here are going to be hatching out soon. It'll be a good, good stock to get a new queen started. A lot of young bees. So we're going to take this frame. Put that in this one.
sure we don't have the clean. I'm going to take this one. another good outside frame. It's just honey stores. We'll take this one. It's just a little bit of honey. Got room for them to draw comb. thing I want to do is look real close and make sure I don't have the queen on here because what I do need to do is I need to give each one of these boxes an extra shake of bees most of those bees the ones that you see that just took off most of the ones that take off right away are typically foragers and they're older bees and we don't want those anyway this has some brood on the front, we got brood on the back. This will make another good frame for this box. So we'll slip it in here. Go ahead and knock these off into this box. What I want to do is I want to double check these last frames and make sure the queen is still in this box. Make sure that queen's not in one of these boxes. I'll take these. I'm going to add an empty frame, an undrawn frame on, in either one of these so that they have something they can work on. And I'm going to take each of these and move it over to its own bottom board and a top opposite direction from this hive. And then we'll come back later and put the queen in. I'll show you what we do there. Okay, so I've left. This nuke and this other one I've left queenless now for a few hours. And before I could even get anywhere, just walking out the door at these queens, I had bees following me. But now you can see that they're already coming out of the little opening here in the nuke box and they're climbing up here and they're attending to this queen. I don't see any aggression towards her. I was going to open this up and take out the uh, attendants that are in this cage because typically I get a better introduction to a queen when I remove the attendants. But as of right now, these guys look like they're very accepting of it. They're walking on the cage, they're not trying to bite it. I don't see them in the defensive posture like I would normally see if this was something they weren't interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and place this one in this hive right now. This is a JZBZ queen cage. And it's already got candy in it, and then it's come with the hanger and protector that goes over this. And so what I can do is I can slip or break off the hanger here. And I can use this to hang this cage in here in the, in the box. Normally I don't, but and I'm going to take her. Now this is the box that has the, the frame in here that um, isn't drawn. I don't want to put her between that. I want to put her between two drawn frames. So I'm going to push everyone over. And I'm going to slide the cage right down in here. See the bees are already moving towards her. Now, they can attend to her, do whatever they've got to do, I can see it. I caught it in between there. They've got access to the candy plug. I'm going to go ahead and put the box back together. Now, same thing on this one. You can see we have quite a bit of bee activity here. These guys are wanting to get out and fly, so I'm going to open it up. They're orienting to this box. They're getting their bearings. 
That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see him trapped in there. It's really hard to move hives when you're at one location and you're not moving too far. This tends to make it a little bit easier. But on this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take out the attendants so I can kind of show you what I'm going to do here. One thing we want to make sure is that we don't lose the queen that's in here. So to keep that from happening, I'm going to make sure that I keep my finger over this opening and I do not let these bees out. Okay? I'm going to take another cage, an empty one, and I'm going to position this right over it. <clears throat> okay? That was a queen and one attendant that just walked in. So now I'm going to open this and I'm going to let all the foragers out or the attendants out of this cage. Okay, that was the other attendant. I just let it out. I'm going to be in my sleeve here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up. This is just the queen that's in here now. I'm sure if I can get a good look at her, but she's got a blue dot on her. She's real pretty. She's a dark queen. Let's go ahead and get her in the hive Open now. This up. And I'm going to slide her between two frames. See the bees moving towards her already. Push the cage in here, make sure I keep some tension on it. Only because I'm not using the hanger. I kind of don't want her right at the top. I want her down in just a little bit. Right above the brood. Push these back together. Put our top back on. Don't smash anybody. Okay, there we go. Now if you notice, down here at the entrance, everybody's kind of calmed down. We're not as ecstatic as we were. And over here, all that activity that we had that had come out to see the queen, they're all back in the hive now checking her out. So we'll give them uh, about two days, unless I see something else go on, and then I'll come back and I'll check to see and. If everything looks good and they're chewing away at the candy and they still look like they're being accepted, I'll probably just let them out and let them get started. But anyway, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching and uh, keep on keeping bees.